for some reason, Batman just always stood out. It's one of the major characters of the 20th century, and so many people connect to it on such a deep level and for so many different reasons. The first conversation I had with Matt about it, I just knew there was something radically different from anything we'd seen in Batman movies before. I felt that we'd to come right in to a young Batman, not be an origin tale, but refer to his origins and shaken to his core. Right from the beginning, there's a desperation to it. He's really working out this rage. All the fights seem very personal. What's so wonderful about this world is the exploration of the gray area. Catwoman really wants to fight for those who don't have someone else to fight for them. And that's where Batman and her really connect. He wants to inflict his kind of justice. He's just compelled to do it. There is no other option. The thing that was interesting about this world and this movie for me was Matt Reeves's vision for it. He really wanted to take this world and ground it in reality. You have any idea the kind of trouble you're in? <laughs> he wanted to reference iconic ideas about gangsters and Gotham and America. It was about finding a balance between film noir ideas and how to make that contemporary. Bruce Wayne in this story was like a recluse who's in this decaying Wayne Manor. So he's down below and he's making this suit. It's his willingness to endure anything in order to do what he thinks needs to be done. And so this suit is very tactical. Even his belt is like a tactical police belt. Everything from zip tie handcuffs to UV light. This would be his flare. And then we have sticky bombs that they can either be placed and set by hand, or they can be fired from this cartridge here. I like that we take stuff from real life and introduce it into the costume. The boots, they're not like fancy superhero boots. They're like Austrian army boots. He's made a top to them to, to protect his shin. The whole idea that it should, it, it should feel very real and grounded in reality. But when it came to the flip side of it, which is Batman can't go looking out for crime, in the night dressed as Batman. So what does he do? He goes out as the drifter. Rob was involved in the evolution of this costume. He really wanted to push the workwear and the idea that that's what makes you most invisible in a modern crowd. He specifically spoke about the dock workers in Manhattan. We actually went to New York to workwear shops and we bought these trousers, lots of different jackets. We tried on a lot of different versions it was just to find the kind of most invisible costume that we could. Paul Dano and Matt were both adamant that they wanted to research what the Riddler could have found in a surplus store near his house. And that would have been the kind of parameters of his, of the options available to him. This is exciting. Um, the, the, the way it looks, the glasses, finding that pair of glasses was really important. We went through a lot of different pairs of glasses. I don't know, maybe we tried on 200 pairs of glasses. I love those clear frame glasses. There's just something about them with over the mask. There's something scientific doctor -y, like, I don't know, there's just some vibe there that I think is really fun. This is a very important prop. This is all of his confessions and tormented mind. Floor to ceiling, we have these ledgers. We had some makers in for many weeks to manufacture all of those by hand, yeah. It is handwritten, so the handwriting was developed by one of our artists, and then she had to sit and <laughs> write the entire uh, ledger or a good part of it. It's sort of pressed into the paper. We looked at Charles Crumb, whose journals, again, he had a disturbance of the mind, 
and his journals are very much like what you see here. This is the level of detail we're trying to achieve. Selena has her backpack. She has her phone, her whip. This was one of the first um, props that I worked out with Matt. Contemporary bike block, and it's got the movement because it's uh, segmented parts. You've got this natural movement, so the lock moves just like a whip should. Selena isn't Catwoman yet. That's one of the things to be clear about. It feels very feminine and very sexy, but still at the same time practical. And then the idea was, how can we take those things and tweak them just a bit so you can see, oh, it's kind of ripping at the seams. It could become the cat suit. You think you could come after my money, huh? This is the penguin. We ended up in a, with a kind of amalgamation with a 40s influenced 80s suit and a very 80s looking leather coat. And the color palette of the costumes are extraordinary. The suit that was made, it just does something to you. There's something kind of esoteric to it that when you put the whole thing on, it's not you anymore. There doesn't feel to be any space between you and what you're wearing. It's all one and the same. The first prop that Colin asked me about is a very gangster type gold ring saw what it was and i kind of understand uh, the language of where colin might want his character to go with this is just a soft um, rubber version of his uh micro uzi which is iconic everything is about character emotion and theme everything is built out from there it really is about you know everyone contributing and and it being a kind of a joint piece of work to always make the world feel as complete as possible.